Hey, what's going on guys? Like Butter here and today I'm going to be bringing you another division video because it is that time again. PTS 2, second week of the PTS for 1.6.1 is up. The patch notes are online. I'm going to put them in a link in the description down below if you want to read along with me. Um, a lot of you console players are really going to like this first change. I honestly cannot believe this was a thing, but apparently Hipfire had uh, auto-aim on console. Now, if you don't know what auto-aim is, almost every single console game out there that is a shooter has some sort of either aim assist or auto aim in the game because the way it works is with a controller when you're just using your thumbs to move around the thumbsticks it's very hard to be able to turn your character fast and be able to turn fast while you're aiming but also be able to have precision shooting so what they do is they put um, sometimes like this little gravitational pull or this uh, slow I know what they used to do in older games is they would make it so that when you uh, kind of moved your cursor over it would just basically slow down when it went over your character well apparently this was uh, procking for hip fire which should never be the case hip fire should be entirely unassisted since it is a act of desperation so that is officially removed so in 1.6.1 that whole hip fire shenanigans on console will be completely gone there was also a new weapon, so confirm that there's going to be new items in uh, 1.7. The LMG M249 saw was showing up in the PTS and it was absolutely melting people. It was much like how the MG5 was showing up back in 1.4 and it wasn't, you know, properly balanced to be in this patch. Um, same thing, it was just absolutely deleting people. So you guys can expect an M249 saw in the future. That's going to be pretty cool, but that is no longer in the PTS for week two, so we don't really need to worry about getting melted anymore. They also did a huge change to Nimble. It may not seem like a huge change, but I promise a lot of people were, you know, had pretty strong feedback on my Nimble video saying that Nimble is completely useless now, even though I disagreed. I totally understand that it was more of a hit towards, um, you know, solo players, and as a player who plays solo a lot, I should have realized that, yeah, you know, when you have to run from cover to cover and you're getting the heal over time and also have to stay in that cover, that could have been an over nerf of Nimble and it probably would have became something that people didn't really like using or find fun to use because after you run from cover to cover to get your heal, you basically have to be a sitting duck. Well, they reverted that change. You no, you no longer have to stay in cover. Um, you can actually run from cover to cover and get that heal over time and then run to another piece of cover and get this. Nimble now actually stacks, which it didn't, uh, well, it, it technically didn't have a chance to stack with the old nimble because you could basically just run from cover to cover to cover and the, the heal would be instant but now even though the heals over time it does stack which means if you're going to run from a you know medium sized cover then to a really short cover to another short cover all those little ticks of health over time are going to overlap and you're going to receive a pretty hefty heal so nimble is definitely definitely the best high-end pick to get if you are a solo player and even if you're not it's going to be super strong um you can see i did these two hvts with ease just using nimble running from cover to cover you can see my health drastically healing over time so uh that is a good change that is one of the changes that i think you guys are really going to like however the next thing we need to talk about is the air burst seeker mine so apparently the air burst seeker mine you know they were supposed to do this change and i kind of like that they're stepping back from doing the over nerfs um ma like massive and red storm and and all the devs on the division have like this thing where they overly nerf things um and it's not because they intend to do that it's because like well with the game like this the meta shifts after like you know every single patch and sometimes the when the meta shifts it makes something not as powerful as it used to be and then when they nerf it it makes it even worse um so uh with the seeker mines they were going to change it in two ways they were going to remove the stagger and they were also going to make it so that 20 percent of the damage from the initial burst was dealt on the burn over time now apparently in the week one of the pts they didn't do this they had um they had it still be 
just the air burst wouldn't stagger you but the damage was still the same now we ran into a couple uh you know seeker mind players that were playing solo so they weren't using like tactician or anything like that and uh, they had some seeker minds that were either one-shotting or coming super close to one-shotting us when we were playing the other day now part of that at least in my opinion is because i don't run edr i also run a glass cannon build so i didn't really think it was that big of a deal however I think in something like Last Stand, this is going to be a huge problem when you have multiple people using Seeker Minds. That's when it becomes a problem. It's not a problem when one person is using a Seeker Mind. It's a problem when you have a group of people using Seeker Minds, and that's where it's going to get a little bit out of control. So in my personal opinion, I don't know how you guys feel about this. I'm sure some of you guys are going to agree. I would definitely, definitely consider taking that 20% off the initial burst and put it into the burn over time to give the player at least a chance to pop a med kit or receive a heal from a teammate. Now, I understand the argument on the other side as well. People are saying, well, if they keep nerfing skill builds or keep nerfing skills, skill builds are going to be useless. And I can't disagree with that enough. Right now, Tactician and Reclaimer are the two strongest healer builds that I've ever come across in the division when you come across a group that has a healer and he knows you know he's using uh he's using defib he has you know max ally heal and he knows how to position himself in the back of the fight he can constantly heal his teammates his entire team every like six to eight seconds for 420,000 hp now in my opinion i rather see skill builds be used in support ways like that than healing than being one shot monsters because when you have things in games that are one shot monsters it just kind of takes away the fun of the game um if if seeker minds are going to one shot you and the ai controls those seeker minds then why take away things like one shot sniper builds like why when one shot sniper builds you actually have to hit your headshot in order to inflict that much damage why remove one shot headshot capabilities if the one shot seeker minds are going to remain in the game my opinion is if they're really worried about seeker minds becoming kind of unusable i would put the stagger back in and either drastically nerf the damage or just keep the stagger uh, out and then reduce the damage a little bit. One or the other, because what's going to happen is is Last Stand is going to be run by Airburst Seeker Mines if they keep it the way it is right now. Now, we couldn't really test Last Stand because Last Stand matchmaking was completely broken. So, you know, I've seen some devs say things like, oh, well, people weren't using Seeker Mines as much in PTS1. Well, yeah, that's because Last Stand was completely busted. Last Stand is what seems to be the biggest problem when it comes to the Seeker Mine balancing. Now, when it comes to the Dark Zone, I understand that, you know, you got to think, well, Dark Zone people don't have their stats maxed out, but it goes the other way too when it comes to defense. So um, I definitely hope that they go back on what they said about keeping the Air Burst Seeker Mind the way it is and take that 20% damage and put it to damage over time at least because it's going to become just as bad as it ever was. So I really hope they uh, do something about that. There's also a bunch of bug fixes, which you guys can read uh, in the link in the description. Unfortunately, a lot of these bug fixes, at least when I read it the first time and the second time, I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything. A lot of these bug fixes were bugs that I had no idea were even in the game. There's some, there's still some major bugs, like no movement speed on the defensive alt. Uh, med, the med alt still doesn't pick up your team sometimes. Like you'll have a teammate down and you'll pop med and then it won't pick them up. Like those are game breaking bugs and those things need to be changed. Also, the contaminated events are super, super bugged right now. Um, the only bug that I noticed was the landmark where the uh, NPCs actually don't respawn. They did fix that, but a lot of the big, big, big problems in the game I don't see in this list of bug fixes. So hopefully this is going to be something that they, you know, put time into for this next week. And uh, if I were them, if I were Ubisoft and I was, you know, massive in Red Storm, I would not only, I would not keep this a two-week PTS. There are some major problems still in this build. Extend the PTS another week. Let's get this shit right. Let's stop bringing out, you know, patches that aren't finished 
and uh, hopefully you know they see you know the community feedback because as far as I'm concerned right now the defensive vault is completely useless without its movement speed with only 50% uh, damage reduction on top of the fact that we have ver like very low mitigation that mitigation isn't stacking as much anymore which can't hold up to things like tactical link or sometimes even when a teammate is or, or a team is focus firing you can just melt right through that blue all also you got to remember like the blue all as op as it was i understand there was a reason it was op it wasn't only op because it gave you 80 percent damage reduction it was op because it gave you 80 percent damage reduction everyone had 75 percent armor mitigation which made it stack even harder and it gave you movement speed and if you got shot through the blue alt it would heal you over time not to mention that the med kits used to heal uh, uh through the damage because of all the mitigation that you had so with the huge resistances from like critical save on the move uh all those other you know player talents that got nerfed those things were absolutely crucial as to why the blue alt was so strong when the game was out now that almost all the things that i just mentioned have been nerfed the blue alt needs its movement speed back or it's going to be completely useless so guys please let's get that blue alt fixed let's get the movement speed back on it now that you know you don't consume the the you, you don't consume the alt anymore and heal when you're getting shot by a player now that you only get 50 percent mitigation all those other things i mentioned we need to get that 30 percent movement speed back on the blue alts it needs to happen so um hopefully in pts3 we'll see some better stuff but uh they did mention of a etf3 which if you guys want to check that out um i was part of the etf bravo it was an amazing experience trust me if you have your passport and you can go to the uk to the reflection studio you definitely, definitely should sign up. So I will put a link in the description to the ETF sign up as well. Super awesome experience. Like they absolutely paid for everything. You don't have to like drop a dime. So uh, definitely check that out. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop the video a like and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.